What's up channel makers? We did a huge day together to see what makes a great intro and we're going to show you how to use those elements in your own videos. The goal is to get them settled and immersed in the first 15 seconds. It's real easy, you just need to do all these things. <laughs> all right. That's a lot of things. It's not yeah. really practical. You won't be able to perfect all of those things in a 15 second intro, especially. So we're going to show you which of those levers to pull, which ones are important and how to identify which ones to focus on for your channel so you can make an awesome intro like the channel makers we're about to show you did. We did a huge data gather. We got hundreds of responses. We looked through them. What's awesome is that we also got analytics for the first, like, well, the whole video, but we got to see how well they held retention for the intro, the first 15 seconds. We got screenshots. Mm -hmm. We got some good submissions. Oh yeah. And thank you to you guys for sending those in because without that baseline of information, we couldn't have extrapolated these points to share with you guys. So thank you. Yeah, let's get into it. Our first channel is Master Builders. This is a brick separator. You use it to pull apart Lego pieces. But what other ways can you use it? So I'm gonna show you a hundred different ways you can use a Lego brick separator. Starting off with, if you attach some eyeballs onto it, you can make whatever this thing is. You can use it as a mini figure catapult. All right, really what do you think? What I noticed is the pacing is incredibly snappy. Within the first three seconds, they've already told you what the video is gonna be about. I really like that they get to the first point within seven seconds. We're talking about the first 15 seconds of intros, but it's important to note that you don't necessarily have to spend the whole 15 seconds on an intro. You can get to the content faster if it makes sense to do so. In this video, I think it really does. There's also 12 jump cuts within the first 15 seconds, which makes it really visually stimulating. It gives you almost no reason to skip forward. Oh yeah, absolutely. You wanna stick through and watch every bit of it. If you miss two seconds of this, you've missed one of the things he's gonna show you. Totally. But it's also a really cohesive style. It's colorful. All those jump cuts are really exciting, specifically to his audience. So it's right on point there, especially uh, with the brick separator, the googly eyes. Uh, quick little joke. All right, now on to our next video, coming to us from No to Robots. Let's jump right in. Three ways that Spider-Verse broke the rules for 3D animation. First and foremost, you have to know the rules of animation in order to break them. Traditionally, 3D animation is animated on ones, which means you have a new pose every one frame. For animation on ones, this gives a really cool. photo. Okay, what do you think of that one, Jake? Well, I love his scene selection first off. He starts out with a scene from Spider-Verse with a lot of movement. The Spider-Man are flying through the air. Uh, makes you feel like you're right there with him, pulls you out of your seat and puts you right there in the experience. Yeah, and I think that the way they did the cuts was really clever here, and the way that they had the on-screen visual elements, that may seem obvious for a channel like this, especially once you watch the video, it might seem like, well, of course, they're gonna show it on screen. But a lot of people would have done that differently. A lot of people would have probably tried to explain the concept and then show the visuals, or show the visuals and then explain the concept. But I really like how he cut back and forth really rapidly so it keeps you engaged and it helps you understand the concept he's trying to explain a lot more easily. Oh yeah, having those things happening simultaneously makes it a lot easier for the viewer to remember your point while they're seeing the point and doing those things at the same time, it just makes sense to yeah. and then, even someone who doesn't know about animation. Right, and they're not gonna wanna skip either way. You kind mm -hmm. of risk people skipping if they don't wanna hear you talk about it, they might skip, or if they don't wanna see the example, or think they don't wanna see the example but wanna hear your explanation, you risk skipping if you choose to do them separately. But if you do them at the same time, again, they have no reason to skip. Yeah, there's no opportunity to skip without missing the message. Another element that I noticed and liked was the captioning. There were words that popped up on screen that even though he's already saying those words, seeing them visually pop up on screen, I can't help but look at the words and wanna read them. It, attracts my attention. All right, now our third video comes to us from Selkirk Range Sasquatch. Let's see what we got. You know, I've never really claimed to see Bigfoot, but I know what I saw. I know I saw something I can't explain. On a dark and rainy night. All right, what'd you think? With this one, something that really stands out and it's subtle, I didn't even notice it like the first couple times we watched the video when we were planning this. But what's so interesting is right in the intro, the first two seconds, you get that thunder, the audio of the, the thunder and the lightning, and it sets the mood, which is important because they're opening up with kind of a bright scene and then later it changes. And so I think that's really cool that they tie in that en entire mood within the first couple seconds. They're not explaining 
this is going to be a dramatic story. They're just showing you right away. I thought the pacing was fantastic. Uh, like you're saying, it only took three seconds for them to create the mood within another seven or eight seconds. The witness has already told a part of the story that hooks the audience. Hasn't given away too much, but given them enough that they want to stick around and find out what happened. Sure. This feels like a documentary and I'm really impressed, you know, because they didn't have they don't have the budget that National Geographic or Discovery Channel or whatever channel would have a video or show like this would have. But they do really well with what they do have. They do really well with storytelling. They really hook you into an overall feeling. Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty impressive, even though this is the smallest channel that on our list that we're reviewing and they still like, they're nailing it. Oh yeah. Uh I love the setting that he ends up telling the story in, where it's that dark background. There's the snow in the background. You can see some of it, but then the full background just goes into darkness. And when he starts telling the story, you can see the cold on his breath. It puts you there in the scene. You feel a little cold. You feel a chill and you feel a little scared as he starts telling you this story. It's super immersive, which is it's what you want. You want to forget you're watching a YouTube video. Mm -hmm. I love how they do that. Yep. Definitely makes you feel like you got to stick around till the end. All right, on to our fourth and final video. This one comes to us from Steve, the bartender. Let's see what we got. All right. Back to the cocktail blog. I'm Steve, the bartender, and today I'm running through my 10 bottle bar. These are the bottles and the brands that I recommend to get started when you want to make cocktails. Now, of course, you don't have to go out and buy all 10 bottles at once. If you want to, you can start and do it incrementally week by week or month by month or KJ, whatever thoughts? you please. But I loved his pace. It only took three seconds for him to introduce himself, the channel, and made a promise within a few seconds so the audience knows exactly what they're going to be getting in return. Yeah, the pacing was really good. That's important. I think people miss that a lot with a channel like this when it's kind of educational. I think you, you feel like you have more leeway to introduce yourself in a way you do. You want to be welcoming. Mm -hmm. It's not so much like the super snappy Mr. Beast type of entertainment, but you don't want it to take too long. He did a really good job of introducing himself really quickly and getting mm -hmm. right into it. What I loved is that like you have all these visuals that kind of set the stage before he even starts talking. You got the good lighting on the bar, all the bar bottles behind him. It also builds a lot of authority and trust. You can tell he's made a couple drinks before. Mm -hmm. He's got dozens of bottles. He has great, great lighting. It just feels very professional. It almost feels gourmet kind of chef. He's going to teach you how to make craft cocktails at home. It feels homey, not too like dark and bar. And that would have been another direction to go with it. He could have made it feel more like a bar, more rough. And that would have been fine if that was his style. But I think he's doing the style that he chose to do really well. Absolutely. And even though he didn't have cuts like the other videos did to uh, bring more visual interest in as new scenes are popping up, just having the bottles there and his setup gave enough visual interest that he didn't need those cuts. And I think the cuts would have pulled away from what his message was. Sure. Even his apron, it all kind of just ties into like, this is who I am. Yep. Trust me. <laughs> Very cohesive style. Yeah. Yep. Well done. All right. What did we notice? Overall, there's a pattern. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of different things that they all did well, but there are definitely some patterns that show us, especially with the top performing videos of this day together, mm -hmm. what makes a really good intro. Mm -hmm. Even though the channel's feel very different. Mm -hmm. What were the points? Broke down into pacing, having a cohesive style, and having an immersive experience. Yeah. yeah, yeah. the visual elements, the story, the takeaway, all need to answer the query that the viewer came in with. Right, and so with all of those things that we listed, all of these crazy options for achieving those, these are all good things to do. And you should be trying to implement a lot of these elements, really as many as you can. But the key thing is to not leave out those three things. Every video can have a lot of these things, but in every video, you should be trying to have those three elements. They're really important. And for the full list of all of the ways you can improve your intros, join Channel Makers Insiders, which is our email list. There's a lot of great perks to being part of that email list, and I'll put the link in the description. And another perk of being on our insiders list is you will get invitations to be part of big data gathers like this, so you can be featured in one of our videos. Yeah, so join that, and also while you're at it, comment on this video, because I'm really curious how you guys are gonna add your own flair to these elements. So you know, we can tell you 
have good pacing and mm -hmm. interesting visuals, but I'm really curious like what your plans are to make your really unique flair and your unique style on those different strategies. So comment and let us know how you're gonna apply it to your own specific topics and videos. Thank you for watching. It's been fun. See you next time. Next time.